Hey, awesome people of YouTube, welcome back to another Bannerlord video. This one is gonna be, well, beginner guide. Pretty much starting tips and essential strategies for beginners. Before we get started with the video, I just want to rem uh, remind that, uh, hope you all had a wonderful Christmas, and I do stream down on Kick, and I do have my own Discord. Link is down in the description, and we do have channel membership, so if you want to help support the channel, to join that but with all that said let's begin with a guide right? let's talk about the game first well mom blade 2 banner lord is a medieval action role-playing game developed by tale wars entertainment it serves as a prequel to the original mountain blade game which uh, offers players an immersive experience set in fictional canon as well known as coradia the game offers elements of strategy role-playing action adventure within a sandbox open world environment where you can take on roles of an adventure in a dynamic world torn apart by political strife, warfare, and shifting allegiance. You can engage in various activities such as recruiting troops, leading armies into battle, trading goods, completing quests, having your own kingdom, being a vassal, and a lot more. One of the defined features of the Bannerlord, well, it is combat system, which includes you being able to command the armies in a large-scale battle, or where you can personally engage in melee or ranged combat. The game emphasize, emphasizes skill-based combat mechanics, allowing you to hone your abilities with different weapons, mounts, tactics, stuff like that. Moreover, you can interact with different factions, kingdoms, and others, each with its own unique culture, strength and weaknesses, influencing the game political landscape through, you know, uh, alliances like working for them, diplomacy, or even conquest. This game allows. Oh, sorry. The game also offers a robust character progression system, enabling you to develop your skills, build relations with NPCs, and shape your own path in the world in evolving world of Claradia. Better Lord also offers expansive and dynamic gameplay experience, allowing players to carve their own legacy in the rich medieval world. Filled with challenges, opportunities, and ever-present backdrop of world, uh, war and power struggle. Before we get into it more, you have two options to start the game with. One is campaign, right? Where you kind of follow through a main quest line if you want to. Uh, campaign offer also offers your. Uh, you're a little bit more support because you have a family where you can have a brother who you can build however you want him uh, and another younger brother and a uh, younger sister right so you have a little bit of family versus sandbox which doesn't offer any family it's just you and you can start whatever you choose say you chose a coach of sturgeon you will start on sturgeon territory right? versus a campaign which you will start in the uh, training ground right at the uh, in imperial territory so depending what you want to choose you will start there right so let's get into the character customization and skills all right better law character creation and skill development are a crucial aspect that shape your gameplay experience right so when starting a new game, you can customize various aspects of your character, like appearance, gender, facial features, backgrounds, and, uh, and a bunch of other stuff. The chosen background, you know, can provide starting bonuses in certain skills. And during character creation, you'll also be able to uh, move your attribute points across things like vigor, control, endurance, cunning, social, and intelligence. These attributes influence uh, different aspects of the character, like combat effectiveness, leadership, uh, charisma, and much more. So let's build our own character. You can build a character however you want. You have character cultures. We have Vlandians, Sturgeons, Imp uh, Empire, Azra, Kuzaid, and Britannia. Depending what you choose, you'll have positive and negative. So each culture have two positive and one negative. So for like Vatani, you have 50% less speed penalty and plus 15 side range bonus in forest. And towns owned by Vatani and rulers have plus one militia production. While the negative is you have 10% slow build rate for town projects and settlements. Because it's different, you know, you 
uh, you get less income, but recruiting and upgrading mounted troop is cheaper. And you get more production from horse, mules, and cows and sheep. They're just owned by Kuzite rulers. You know, Azrai have no speed penalty in the desert, and your caravans are cheaper and less trade penalty, but you pay more uh, to your troops. Empire, your villagers have increased 20% less, which means they don't, uh, you know, they don't build as fast. While you being an army gives you more influence, and you pay less garrison wage troops. Or garrison, you pay less uh, wages to garrison troops. Sturgeon recruiting infantry is cheaper. You lose less cohesion while in an army, but you get more penalty from kingdom decisions. You know, versus of Lanians, you get more renown from battles, and you get more income while being a mercenary, and you get more production from villages that bound to castles. But getting uh, recruiting lost to an army will cost you more. So depending on what you pick. Will be buffs and negatives, or buffs and debuffs, so to speak, positive and negatives. Some that are not big, some of them are a little more annoying. Um, more easier is Empire and Batania. Batania is just so you have less speed penalty in a force, so go with that. Now, we talk about character creation and uh, being able to choose your feature, uh, uh, facial features, and all that. You know, you can randomize all and stuff you know you can just randomize certain parts you know so we just uh randomize a bunch or you can you know change face or uh change like different other stuff you know it's up to you however you want to make a character right i'm not gonna spend a bunch of time but you can right you can also uh, get some nice, you know, scars, face paint, all that wonderful stuff. But once you're done with that, that brings into your skills and, well, uh, proficiencies, you know. Skills, you know, which we'll talk once you get your uh, stuff, will help you a lot. So, during this stuff, or family, you want to pick what you want character to specialize, you know. If you want him to be more of a healer. You make sure to pick stuff that give you medicine and intelligence. Or if you want him to be a more combat, if, uh, combat, pick stuff that give him vigor, two-handed, or uh, control stuff, you know. So we're going to build him like this. Uh, like he is a bow because he is Batanian. But you can build him however you want. But building him the way you want him to specialize will allow you to have easier time progressing through those skills. No, so if you want to have a medic, but you build them like a warrior, you're not gonna have easier time getting your medicine skill up. You know? versus if you wanted to be a warrior, but you build them like a medic, he's not gonna be good in combat. So remember that, you know. So we just, like I said, build them to be a decent warrior, which. Is always nice, you know. Unfortunately, this stuff that you pick right now, you cannot change later in the game. You know, so once you pick it, that's your character. For the time being. But not for the time being, for, well, until you're done. Right? So once you're done with that, you can check what you have. He'll give you a culture, which you get positive and the negatives. Tell you what you <coughs> excuse me pick, which gives you like let's say for the family, I get ten uh, skill levels in two hundred and bow, and I get one point of vigor. Other one, you know, and it lists you off, right? So you can see which bonuses you get. Then you'll be able to pick your name. So we'll pick with this. Boom, and you get the certain difficulty. You know, by enabling birth and aging, you can get uh, your family or you can have babies. But you'll age up and die, right? If you do campaign, you're set at a certain age. If you do sandbox, you can pick your age, right? So now we'll start. While we're starting, you know, let's talk about your skills. You know, skills represent your character's right. expertise in different areas. Well, sure this is campaign where you can right. learn Let's your different stuff, you know. You can practice being... We'll go back to skill proficiency in a second. We can practice, you know, we'll go back in there. Uh, melee combat, range combat, 
horse combat, melee, or archery. And as you can see, you know, you can pick different weapons, be it uh, with just a sword and shield or just with a sword. In the later one, it is two-handed, one-handed, and all that wonderful stuff. And you can see on the left, you can spend all day here just practicing. It's not going to give you skills to progress, but you can at least, you know, pick and choose what you want to uh, use. For like, let's say, if you want to be a melee, you can see what melee stuff you want to have. Or if you're uh, ranged, you can see, oh, maybe I want to be more into bow or bow and you can you know look at a character and then you can specialize or if you already picked it you can see oh i like it a lot so let me practice this so i can be better so this is what the training area is for but once you go out and you know you fight some battles you do some things you will get skill points you know which will allow you to get perks but in order to get the skill points you need to level up your skills and you can do that by doing different things for like um melee you need to fight with different weapons so for like two-handed you fight with two-handed for one-handed one-handed for range you use the specific range you know and it tells you if you click on the plus assign over here it will tell you how to level them up i apologize for that and once you level up you get certain skills uh skill progression and perks perks allow you to advance in the skill levels, unlocking specific perks in each skill tree. These perks provide various various bonuses and special abil abilities that further enhance the character combat effectiveness or the leadership trait or other areas, you know. In Battleworld, you can, uh, you have the flexibility to tell your character to, to your preferred playstyle, whether it's being combat mastery, diplomacy, trading, uh, or just combination of different skills. The choices that you make during the character creation and the way you develop your skills throughout the game significantly impact your gameplay experience and success within the world of Caradia. That is up to you how you build your character and how you progress. So with that said, let's get into the third chapter. All right, the next chapter or chapter three of this guide is well, what to do once you made your character in the early stages of the Bannerlord, where you should focus on multiple things like recruiting troops. And you can start recruiting troops by going to uh, villages or town. You know, these early soldiers will be the backbone of your initial army. You can recruit from different factions, each with its own uh, strength and weaknesses. And you go to the village, recruit troops, and it tells you how much you pay for them and how many you can uh, recruit, right? Recruiting troops will allow you to safely travel the world of Caradia from bandits and enemy stuff while building up your other stuff, right? You also want to do complete quests, which you can do by engaging with NPCs in town or villages to undertake their specific quests. The quests can be ranged from delivering goods, escorting caravans, hunting bandits, resolving disputes, you know, uh, by completing this quest, not Will it own, not only will it earn you rewards, but it also give you experience and put relations and acquire some resources. Of course, you can see like this, where it will be a rival gang moving Nikron, where you have to wait some stuff. And you can uh, wait and do that. Or we'll talk about uh, hunting bandits. You can hunt a certain amount of bandits and it gives you money. Right. Another thing that you want to do in the early stages of the Banner Lord is earn money. You can get it by establishing income sources by trading goods, participating in the tournaments. That, in the tournaments, you can see by this little helmet, you know, uh, engaging productive enterprises within towns. Pretty much just effective training and resource management can help you accumulate wealth early on. And you can see, like, when you go to the town, if it has that helmet, you click Arena. Uh, tournament and you can see what it will give you and you can sell that armor or keep it you know and it can give you some money another thing that you want to do is get your equipment upgraded invest in better weapons armor horses just not only for yourself but for your companions upgrading and equipping enhances your combat effectiveness and your ability to survive in battles and one of the biggest things is increasing your renown and influence you can do that participating in battles, tournaments, skirmishes to increase your influence and renown. Renown 
as you can see if you click on clan it's right here you know, and you can see what it gives you for next um stuff renown allows you to attract more troops and improve your reputation while influence you see it down here will allow you to uh to use it during various diplomatic actions when you're in a kingdom or uh, get more money when you're a mercenary and another thing that you want to do is build relations interact with lords merchants and notable figures building relation with them through you know conversation aiding them in battle or quests can result in you getting more trade benefits or even more opportunities for recruitment so for example let's talk about recruitment stuff you can see i can't get these two troops because i don't have enough re uh, relation with them by completing their quests and stuff i get more relations which will allow me to recruit these troops right uh you also want to gain experience and level up you know engaging in battles leading your troops performing a bunch of stuff will allow you to gain experience and level up leveling up grants skill points which you can allocate new character abilities and liking your skills and perks which you can see here you know once you get a decent sized army and you are mercenary participate in the small skirmishes during larger battles aid in sieges you know pretty much just do everything <laughs> kind of kind of <laughs> for like a better word uh you want to explore and discover you know different areas um discover new lords new ladies that you can't really see because the fog of war you know can you see them just so go out and explore this early game objectives will lay the foundation for your character progression progression financial stability and strategic positioning in dynamic world where you can uh in the dynamic world of korea sorry which will set up the stage for further conquest adventures and much more in this wonderful world but with that said let's get into the chapter four now let's talk about chapter four which is more about the troops you know we already talked about how you can recruit troops by visiting towns and villages but let's talk about more well once you're a crew, you want to upgrade them you know you will recruit more than likely recruit so they start at the lowest tier and you can upgrade them by letting them gain experience in battles as they level up they advance to stronger troop types and have better equipment and abilities and you want to ensure you have a mix of infantry archers and cavalry as well as other specialized units to form a well-rounded and adaptable army of handling combat scenarios you know you just don't want to have pure infantry which will not do as good as you know mixed you don't want to have full archers or cavalry because they might not do as good right so you want to have well-rounded you want to have decent infantry with some shock troops you want to have decent cavalry and archers so they can do uh, do well in battles and they're well-rounded you know I use the cheats just so you know just so we can get this guy a little faster you want to have decent infantry with some archers and cavalry right this is not a well-rounded preferably i would have uh like less little less cavalry maybe like 30 cavalry and more archers you know i'd have like 50 60 infantry around 30 to 40 archers and then the rest is cavalry right and we talk about your recruits you know as they gain experience they will be able to go from just recruits and you can get them into archers or infantry and you can build them up making them that much better you know because as you can see the recruit only has 21 handed 10 two handed 20 paw and 20 athletics versus a legionnaire has 131 handed 82 handed 130 pole arm and 130 athletics so he's a lot better and you can see this guy has just body armor uh, of five two two you know five body two arm and two leg armor versus this guy who has chest piece of 48 body 14 arm and 24 leg armor so he's a lot more tankier right but once you have your army you know you want to maintain a morale keeping your troops morale high to maintain their effectiveness in battle winning battles having enough food paying wages in time and avoiding necessary losses are factors contributing to high morale the higher morale the better to do in battle because if they have low morale they're more likely to run away during the battle and you don't want to do that you want to keep that morale high right 
you also want to manage to have good enough leadership skills. Leadership skills significantly improve impact of your army size and effectiveness. Investing in leadership skills and other skills like stewardship allows you to group more troops and maintain better relations with them, respectively. Right? So you can see you have decent leadership, which will increase the party morale that my command and it gives me different perks that allow me to get experience from my troops passive like combat tips plus two uh, daily experience for all troops you know it also allows me to get more troops through like uplifting spirits you can have stewardship for yourself or you can have a steward that will give you more party size like and make you pay less wages or have uh, them consume less food you know that way you can get more troops and keeping the morale and allowing them to be much better is huge, right? Um, you also want to train your troops daily, and you can do that by having this two skills: the uh, the drill sergeant and the combat tips, which will give them experience, so they can continuously uh, level up. Right? You also want to maintain nice supply. You want to keep sufficient stock of food. And different types of food for your army to prevent morale penalties due to starvation. You can purchase food or you can loot it. And having more food types will allow you to get more um, stewardship. And they will get more uh, morale, right? By winning and getting experience in battles, uh, not only will you help yourself and your troops, but you will get more experience, more loot, and opportunity to capture enemies, further strengthen your army. By building a formidable army in Mount Blade 2, Bannerlord, uh, you will not only just allow yourself to expand your influence, but will allow yourself to become an unstoppable force in this wonderful world, which will lead us to the step 5 or chapter 5. Alright, so chapter 5 is all about economy and trade. Well, you want to be able to afford not only your troops, but your food and along, uh, and other stuff like upgrades and all that wonderful stuff. Which will require a lot of money and you can get money by trading, managing workshop, fighting and other bunch of stuff, right? Uh... We have a bunch of economic system. Each town, village, and castle in Korea has its own economy based on the production, consumption, and trade of various goods. Villages produce raw materials such as grain, livestock, iron ore, hardwood, and more. Towns process those materials into finished goods such as weapons, armor, and other commodities. You know, you want to build trade routes. By in different regions, uh, they produce different uh, stuff, and they demand different goods. Understanding this region of, region of variations is crucial to making profit during trading. Purchasing goods where they're abundant and selling them where scarce will give you a profit. Keep now fluctuating prices due to supply and demand dynamics. For example, um, you can sell, uh, you can buy horses in Azar and, and Kuzaid and sell them in, once this saves, please. Just with that in Britannia, you know, where they don't have as many horses, even in Volandia, you can sell it, even Sturgia, allowing you to get more profit. You know, you can purchase salt and Kuzaid and sell them in Volandia, getting you more profit. Just gotta remember that. You can also make profit through caravans and workshops. Establishing caravans allow you to automate the trading activities. Caravans will travel between cities, buying and selling goods based on their assigned trade routes. Which, or they just do whatever they want and they just trade, allowing you to get some money. Workshop, which you will need to set up in towns to produce goods from raw materials. The type of workshop, you choose to determine the goods and produces and its profitability. Right? You can see, you know, if you look at it, uh, how ready of the smoothsmith, you know, or is owner of the silversmith. This guy doesn't have any workshops. She has a pottery, he has a wood shop. Uh, he doesn't have anything. You can go to them, you know, talk to them, and yes. purchase their yes. workshops. You know, and it will tell you how much. Uh, let's see if we can purchase one. 
unfortunately not. But you can also purchase the caravans. But for caravans, you will need uh, a trader. You will need another uh, wonder. Don't worry, I'm just giving this so we can purchase the workshop, right? Once you have the caravan, you talk, or once you have an extra person, a wonder, which unfortunately we don't have any, who you want to set up a caravan, you talk to somebody who owns the caravan, like the silversmith, and you can purchase the cheaper caravan, or you can purchase more uh, troops, and it will set out and do its own thing. But be careful with the bandits and, uh, and enemy kingdoms, if you're at war with them, will try to kill that caravan if they see it. Excuse me. Well. But... Once we have enough money to purchase the silversmith, you purchase it. Boom. Now you also have a warehouse. And depending what workshop you have, you can see it in your clan. Uh, oh, it would be another. You know, it would say like, oh, you need silver and I'll put jewelry. And I'll have other stuff. Or you can change it. You know, you can get a brewery or weavery, or velvet, or linen, you can get wine press, pottery, and all that wonderful stuff. We'll switch to uh, the brewery, because we can get grain, and you want to purchase grain, you know, and then put it into a warehouse, and it will, uh, boom, will automatically, uh, you know, use it, you know, we have 103 grain, and it will output a certain amount of beer. So you want to do that. This is a longer process. I have not played with it since they updated it. But you can get money that way. If the town is captured by enemy lord. By enemy kingdom. There is a risk you will lose your warehouse. Which you will need to uh, ensure. But you can do it only through trade. And if you level up trade. You will get bonuses like you know. Um. Uh, this is for cameras where your cameras gather rumors or your workshop will gather rumors where they tell like, oh, uh, clay will sell for a huge amount of money in this town, but you can buy for cheap over here. You know, you can also where you get artisan community where you get more renown just from profitable workshops or for caravans. If you're into, uh, into that one, you can also where if your camera is destroyed, you get 5,000 dinars. Or 5,000 uh, dinars if your workshop is destroyed. You know. Stuff like that. That will help you. And you can see. Like give you price penalty. Reduction. All that wonderful stuff. You can also make money through. Um, banditry. You can attack. Caravans and uh, civilians. Or villagers. But be mindful. It will not be good for you. You will more than likely declare war on that. Caravan. Or that village kingdom, which is not great because that whole kingdom will attack you. You know, <coughs> uh, you can also make a little bit of money by doing the set quests where you can uh, get rid of bandits. That is also uh, good for economy, or not for economy, but allow, allowing you to get some money. You know, the biggest thing is supply and demand. If you really want to make a lot of money, is you know. When you see a town in siege, more than likely will be starving. You'll have no food. So before that, you can buy a lot of cheap food and sell it over there because that town will need that food. You know. So sieges and wars and disruption and trade routes will allow for uh, supply and demand. These events will create an opportunity for you to have profitable trade in alter market conditions. Understanding the intricacies of the economy, mastering the trade routes, establishing profitable enterprises, and adapting to changing market conditions are crucial to success in economic aspects of Bangalore. Building wealth through trade can provide resources necessary for expanding your influence, getting better troops, fathering your ambitions within the game. So all this stuff is really necessary. But with that said, let's get to the next chapter of the video. All right. Chapter 6 is Combat and Warfare Basics, you know. Combat and Warfare are uh, center elements of Bannerlord where you provide, uh, where you get diverse and engaged gameplay opportunity. Some of the basics of Combat and Warfare are, you know, weapon proficiency, blocking and parrying, melee combat, range combat, 
mount the combat and commanding troops. But for wherever you have battle preparation, field battles, sieges, tactical command, leading armies, capturing prisoners, and looting. So let's talk about combat basics. So you have weapon proficiency, you have different weapons such as sword, axes, bows, pole arms, all that. They all require different level of skills to use effectively. But practicing with different weapons, it will improve your efficiency. You can do that in the training area. You know, we talk about melee practice over here. You have mounted, you have ranged. Black and parrying efficiency is master of, you know, black and parrying. It will allow you to defend against the enemy. Timing positioning are crucial for successful blocks and parries. You can learn it all here. You know, spending time doing this will help you in the long run. No, but if you want to do melee, you know, if you want to go be more ranged combat where you practice archery and throwing for range attacks, you want to go here, you know, just arrows by practice aiming and leading targets for accurate shots, taking advantage of terrain for common advantage points will help you be much more effective because bow and crossbow are different. And uh, javelins are completely different, you know, throwing weapons are different than anything else. So spend that time here. For mounted combat, mounted mounts provide mobility and advantages in battle. You're learning to effectively use them. Excuse me. Uh, learning to effectively fight on the horseback using speed maneuver maneuverability to strike enemy sentry quickly. Be massive because you don't want to just charge into uh, pretty much a spear wall or a pike wall just for your horse to get eliminated and for you to well, eliminate as well so spend that time here learn different stuff right commanding troops is a whole different things than fighting on foot commanding troops is where you control need your troops in battle issuing uh, commands such as advance hold position charge or follow you to coordinate your forces effectively you know you want to spend that time learning uh, your terrain learning how you want to move the troops which will help you have an easier time during the battles for warfare mechanics you have battle preparations where you want to gather troops plan strategy and equipping your army with proper soldiers uh, before engaging in battle and sieges for field battles you participate in a field, huge field battles where it's not just your party but multiple parties fighting where you want to use your tactics formation troop composition to uh ensure a victory using terrain advent uh, advantageously and positioning troops strategic is all huge for sieges you want to lay siege to enemy castles or defend against the sieges by using siege weapons such as battering ramps siege towers catapults catapults will allow you to breach or even defend your fortification you want to also position your troops, you know, effectively along the castle walls. So that your castle is not quickly overrun. You have tactical command using formations such as shield wall, wedges, circles, and tactics to maximize your army effectiveness, adapting strategies based on the terrain and enemy composition. By leading armies, your influence will grow, allowing you to command even larger armies. Coordinating multiple groups of troops or armies to conquer territories and engage in large-scale battles. Once you win the battles, uh, to capture enemy troops as prisoners and claim loot, you can uh, sell those prisoners or use them to gain influence or even recruit them. While the loot you acquire can be sold for profits or used to equip your tr uh, not only yourself but your uh, companions. Understanding this combat mechanics, honing your skills with different weapon types, and mastering battlefield strategies are essential to success, both in individual combat and large-scale warfare. Adjusting your tactics and learning from defeats and continuously improving your combat prowess will significantly impact your game, uh, success in the game. So spend the time here. Even if you lose, learn from it. What did you do wrong? What you didn't? Learn from it. right? Which leads us to next and last chapter of this video all right last but certainly not least chapter chapter seven is about kingdom stuff you know once you achieve your clan tier two or higher you know you can join a kingdom 
uh, by becoming a vassal by joining kingdom you want to find the kingdom that you want to well become a vassal for you have Azar, Batani, Kuzaid, Northern Empire, Southern Empire, Sturge of Landia, and Western Empire you know to join a kingdom you need to approach a ruler of the kingdom you wish to join and you can pledge your allegiance by speaking to the ruler and expressing your desire to become a vassal since we want to join a Southern Empire we want to find Regia. So once you do, you talk with her, and you select an option is, well, there's something like to discuss. And you select, I would like to enter your service. And I'll give you my sword is yours for the right sum. That's for mercenary, clan tier one, and you can do it from clan tier one plus. But from clan tier two, you can say, my lady, I wish to pledge allegiance to you by con by con and be counted among your loyal followers. Select that, you say, I'm ready, and then you repeat what she says, you know boom she gives you some troops depending on the culture gets on troops for empire you get imperial cataphrac and five heavy horsemen boom as well as a weapon and a standard right and it'll give you a little prompt where you join set things you know by joining a kingdom you swear an oath of allegiance to the rule of the kingdom committing yourself to their cause this action binds you as the vassal of the two uh to the ruler and the kingdom apostles or control i don't know why it does that right uh by being vast you have responsibilities and your responsibility is to primary uh to to support your leech and the kingdom that which, which involves participating in wars battles campaigns and expanding the kingdom territories defending against the enemies and well fulfilling the ruler's objectives so for us, we need to, you know, fight Azra, you know, gain territory over there. And by contributing to kingdom success, by winning battles, completing quests, and aiding fellow lords, your contribution will earn you a trust and favor of your liege and fellow uh, lords and ladies, possibly resulting in lands granted you, such as castles and towns, you know. By helping you, you have more you know trust and you can gain all of that but that is it pretty much for this video this video is primary uh, aim to provide new players with comprehensive beginner's guide by covering some of the essential aspects of better lord gameplay mechanics and offering a helpful strategy to kickstart your journey in a better lord so if this video helped don't forget to leave a like comment subscribe don't forget to stay awesome i'll see you in the next one and bye bye